Voodoo Ranger IPA, reminding you to live rangerously and drink responsibly. May the beer always flow and your dice rolls ever be in your favour. And for beer news and occasional mediocre advice, follow at Voodoo Ranger on Twitter and Instagram. Hello, Johnny from Dicebreaker here, and you are watching our review of Blood Bowl, the second season edition. Uh, this is going to be a bit different to a normal review, because instead of reading out a pre-prepared script from an auto cue and cutting away to B-roll, I'm just going to be chatting while painting up uh, one of the miniatures. This is one of the linemen from the Bogenhaven Barons, and funnily enough, my webcam is not focusing on it. There we go. You, it was in focus for a split second. Anyway, why are we doing it like this? Well, firstly, lockdown makes it quite hard for me to uh, meet up with my colleagues and film a nice dy dynamic game of Blood Bowl for B-roll and kind of cut away to, to moments of high excitement because I haven't seen any of those people in nine months. Also, just static shots of unpainted miniatures on a board does not for great B-roll make. And secondly, I think I'd rather talk about this game off the cuff rather than sticking rigidly to a uh, script, excuse me, because uh, I'm really excited about this one and I kind of just want to get that to show through because uh, I think this might just be my favourite Games Workshop game ever. Uh, for context, I've played a lot of Age of Sigma, I've played uh, Warhammer Underworlds, uh, Age of Sigma Warcry, and some uh, 40k, but honestly, I think Blood Bowl might be the one. Okay, so the very top line, what is Blood Bowl for the uninitiated? Uh, Blood Bowl is basically Warhammer's equivalent of American football, although really um, it's more like the uh, Warhammer equivalent of rugby because you don't get uh, downs as they're known in uh, in American football so there aren't endless plays where you're setting up and making a call and hut hut trying to play out sort of a preset um, defensive or offensive manoeuvre instead um, you've got your pitch you've got uh, obviously your two teams each team has an end zone and each team is trying to get the ball into the other team's end zone to score a touchdown. So far, so good. Uh, one player, one team, excuse me, will kick the ball into the other team's half, at which point that team needs to just smash their way through and get to the other team's side. Um, in Blood Bowl, when you start your go, you can activate every single one of your players and they can move around doing things like, well, moving, uh, blocking, which is basically trying to smash into your opponent and damage them. You can pass, you can try and pick up the ball and so on and so forth. But in doing these things, uh, there's every chance that you're going to screw it up. Picking up the ball, for example, you have to test your agility. And if you fail on that, you fail to pick up the ball. When this happens, uh, you get what's called a turnover, which means that your entire team's go immediately ends and the action goes over to the, to the other team. Um, so your go could be seamless. You could activate every single member of your like 11 person team on the field and do all sorts of things and drastically change the tactical landscape or on your very first activation you could trip over your own feet face plant and give the turn back to your opponent so it's a very tit for tat game that that runs very very quickly um has a high potential for um just hilarious screw-ups um and there's also a very strong push your luck element to this game because the chances are at the start of your go there'll be one thing you really want to do whether that's get the ball into someone else's hands so they can make a run or tackle one particular player to make sure they stay down uh, which will open you up for sort of uh, a maneuver a little bit further down the line but of course there's every chance that your go will just end before you manage to get that done so the order in which you activate your players and the things you try and do um, and how complex really those strategies are, it is up to you, but it really does feel like in many ways you're gambling in this game. And it's it's just, yeah, I, it's really charming. But anyway, that is the baseline of sort of what Blood Bowl is. Obviously there are different teams um, in, in the box, which we'll talk about fully in a bit. You get uh, the Black Orcs team and you also get the, the Bogenhaven Barons uh, who are humans. Uh, each team plays differently. They have different stats, for example, you know, um, 
The orcs can't move very far, but they're really, really strong, so they hit extremely hard. Humans uh, can move a lot further. They aren't as strong. However, their their armor values are quite high, so they, they are pretty resilient. They're hard to injure and sort of take off the pitch permanently. But generally speaking, the rules are fairly standardized. It plays out the same way. It's just that there are stats variations and skill variations between the teams. Hopefully, that makes sense. So, in the actual box for the second season edition, uh, as I've already said, well, I've already shown, you get the board, which is uh, double-sided, you get turf, and you get astro granite, which is, I mean, you can see from the blood spatters on the board, it must be an absolutely horrible surface on which to play. But uh, you get the rule book, you get uh, two teams, obviously, I've, I've shown you some of those. Uh, you also get handy dandy rulers. This is the ruler for how long a pass is. So, uh, you know, short pass, uh, like long ball. Uh, you get a ruler to determine which way the ball is going to go when it deviates. So, for example, if the ball were kicked into the air, um, the, sort of the whims of the wind would determine how many spaces the ball goes and off the roll of a d8, in what direction. There is another one of those for throw ins. Uh, so you put this on the line, you roll a d6, and depending on the result, the ball goes one way or the other. Uh, Throw-ins are one of my favourite things in this game, because uh, when the ball goes off the pitch, it doesn't halt play, the crowd immediately throws it back in. Uh, and they can either just sort of give it a limp throw, or absolutely just cane it down the pitch. Um, this is very much a game that uh, just has a constant flow. Once the ball starts... Uh, it basically, it keeps going until someone scores a touchdown or uh, you reach the end of that quarter, uh, which is eight turns for each player. So you really are just constantly having this like push and pull battle to try and score. Anyway, uh, you also get team dugouts, which is, you know, during play where you keep your reserves, you keep track of what turn it is, what the scores are, how many re-rolls you have left. Um... Here is where your uninjured players can be sent out for the next drive, which is basically when you reset and start the action again. These are injured players who might recover and return to the field, and these are casualties. These are the ones who are missing the game. And uh, if you're doing league play, potentially missing the next match, which is brutal. But it's better than dying, which is also a thing that can happen if you get injured. You can just get tackled so hard, you die. Um, Final bits in the box, obviously you've got dice, uh, and obviously with the teams you've got team markers, and you've got balls, and that sort of thing. And then finally, and very handily, there are cheat sheets. These are kind of just like an, an easy rules reference, so you know what's going on. Um, and you can look up things like what the dice results mean, or what the casualty table is. Look, I told you, 15, 16 on a d16. The player is just dead, and uh, this player is far too dead to play Blood Bowl, is what it officially says. So yeah, that's the contents of the box, um, and to be honest with you, I think it's pretty good value. Um, the thing is, obviously, Blood Bowl has been going quite a long time, so how much value you get out of this box uh, really determines how much you already have because if you are an established blood bowl player with all of the markers and you've got your own teams and boards and stuff really you know you can just pick up the new rule book and you'll be absolutely flying obviously if you're a new player uh, assembling all of the bits differently i've kind of run the numbers on this if you wanted to buy your own board and the rule book you're already pushing sort of the 50 quid mark so then on top of that dice I'll call that like eight quid uh, and a team which is somewhere in the region of like 22 pounds to 29 depending on where you're buying it from um, you can basically buy into blood bowl from an absolute non-starter position without buying the boxed set if for example the two teams don't appeal to you but to be honest with you if you are looking to make your first foray into blood bowl i would say it's worth doing because the i think the rrp on the second edition box is 85 pounds so even if like you don't care about the teams you'd be better off just picking up the box getting all the gubbins and just selling the plastic that you don't want uh, and then you'd be able to afford a team you actually do want to play with so I realized i said i was going to paint during this review and so far I've not even taken the lid off my brush but i will fix that bit 
I promise. Last bit I need my hands for before I can turn them to painting. Uh, we may as well have a bit of a closer look at the rule book, which is, I mean, you know, typically for Games Workshop, I think it's quite a nice tome. It's got kind of uh, the history of Blood Bowl. I did not realise that there is a deity called Nuffle um, who loves violent sports. And you can see here has uh, a hot dog floating next to him. Um, it's all about sort of the history of the sports and how, um, how the... NAF or the Nuffles Amoracle Football League uh, came to prominence and then collapsed and how, uh, you know, Blood Bowl now exists um, in a more sort of standardised but f more friendly and less voraciously capitalist sort of um, system and, you know, why it's still popular. And then it starts to explain the game itself before naturally delving into the rules. Um, and I mean, I'll talk about sort of my history with with Blood Bowl in a little bit, but as rules reference, it's pretty good. Like it, it goes through and explains how to play um, generally before then really delving into the nitty gritty of the rules, um, which I think is good in terms of not intimidating new players. Like you sort of get a broad overview and you go, OK, I think I know how this works. I know that on my turn I could blitz or I could uh, pass even, you know, I could declare that I'm going to pass on my turn, even if I start my turn without the ball, for example. Um, one downside of this is once you get into um, the, uh, the sort of, basically having the rules divvied between these two sections means that oftentimes if you're looking something up, you'll look it up, say, in the index, and it'll be like, okay, you want to go here for this explanation. And then there, it will basically be a thing like, this thing, which is explained more fully on this other page, is blah blah blah. It's a really really minor nitpick but I found that more often than not when I was looking stuff up in the rules I was bouncing between three sections of the book regularly and um, it meant that my first couple of games were really quite slow as I kind of just went uh, and thumbed through but the good news is overall the rules of Blood Bowl are pretty simple to pick up. Um, I think part of that comes from the fact this is basically a board game simulation of American football or rugby really or you know to be honest it has some pretty strong similarities with football football or soccer as you might call it basically what I'm trying to get across here and I will start painting now is that um, there are some core rules and once you've got those in your head the game starts to flow really really nicely um, and indeed in something I will come back to in a bit I think it starts to flow uh, better than uh, Games Workshops, other games like uh, Age of Sigmar and 40k, for example, um, even though it kind of tit for tats quite so, uh, quite as much as it does. Um, once you get your head around those rules, the game really does start to sort of gather pace and um, it, it carries forward quite surprisingly quickly. I mean, when you hear that you're going to take 32 turns in a game, that sounds like a lot, especially when you consider most games of, say, uh, 40k. You're looking at five battle rounds, and obviously, you know, a battle round is is quite um, an involved thing. But there's only five of the sods uh, in this. Thirty-two turns, although admittedly, those turns could end in a matter of seconds if you biff your roll. So let's talk a little bit more about the game, sort of in general. Um, and for context here, um, I am pretty new to Blood Bowl. I have played Blood Bowl 2 a fair bit on the PC, and I also played a lot of Blood Bowl Team Manager, which is uh, a card game that nonetheless sort of does explain, it does a pretty good job of getting across the appeal of Blood Bowl, I think, and uh, sort of explaining the way it works mechanically, and you know, you're still rolling block dice and all that kind of stuff, but it's, it's more that you're playing as the manager of a team. It's weird, but it is genuinely, trust me, quite a good game. Anyway, um, even taking all of that into account, uh, the second season edition was the first time I really sat down, uh, put plastic on the table and gone for it. Because while the, the PC version of Blood Bowl is a pretty faithful port, obviously when you've got a computer handling the rules for you and, you know, resolving basically every, every dice roll and um, making sure that the game proceeds smoothly, you don't really get a good sense of how the action actually proceeds of, of how quick the game is or um, or just sort of what it's like to play actually on the tabletop and I'm pleased to say that uh, I think it's bloody great um, 
it's it's fiddly to start with, like no doubt. But that's true of so many tabletop games. But once you get your head around it, it is an absolute delight. There are so many just moments of of just like exhilaration, but also just knowing that disaster can strike at any moment. It means that the whole thing is just that you can't take it as seriously as other tabletop games. I think, you know, I, I'm aware that a lot of people describe uh, Blood Bowl as swingy, and I think that's pretty true. In the last game I was playing, I was basically just eating it for six turns, seven turns, um, and then I managed to get a lucky breakaway and I scored a touchdown and I ended up winning. Um, but there is still something about the way that you can you think here is my moment here it is or you're looking at someone thinking well here it goes they're they're about to score and then you know your trained troll will eat the goblin lineman or you know somebody will will run into somebody else and get horribly injured um for no particular reason there are just so many delightful moments where the game goes no 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 uh it's not going to play out that way how about this um that it's just it's just it's it's Saturday morning cartoons in a in a tabletop game. It's kind of it's popcorn entertainment versus sort of the very weighty, grim dark experience of of other games. I think that's a big appeal for me. There's just very little fat on on Blood Bowl. Um, it doesn't feel ploddy in the same way that that full scale army games can, uh, or indeed even skirmish games. Like you know, I love Age of Sigmar Warcry. And when I started playing that, I thought, oh, this is a lot closer to what I think I was searching for when I started playing uh, Age of Sigmar and collecting Skaven models, but it's still not quite there. I think Blood Bowl is maybe what I've um, been looking for the whole time. The fact that the action can turn on a sixpence, every turn really, really matters, but every turn can also just end hilariously badly. I mean, for context, I play Skaven in Age of Sigmar, and I love the fact that sometimes, you know, you spin up a rattling gun and the Skaven operating it can accidentally pull themselves into the machinery and the whole thing can blow up. I really like that sort of high quotient for chaos in, uh, no pun intended, in the games that uh, that I play. And so the fact that Blood Bowl can sort of just really, it just pings around so erratically, it's, it's hard to take too seriously. And that's something I, at least as sort of, as a newcomer to it, really appreciate. I think it's also fair to say that Blood Bowl, as far as miniature games go at least, is pretty beginner friendly. I mean, like I say, I was coming to it sort of as a newcomer, but I've played, I mean, a lot of board games in the past, but also, you know, a fair few tabletop, like, miniatures games at this point. So I feel like I can pick them up quite quickly, but uh, I sort of, I played against myself a couple of times, which um, felt lonely, but was actually still really fun. And then I taught it to my wife, who uh, very uh, nobly agreed to play in in no, uh, in place of some people who, um, let's say, would want to. Um, my wife does play like quite a lot of board games, but generally speaking, she's not really uh, she doesn't really have any interest in uh, like tabletop miniature games like like Warhammer or anything like that. It's just like not her bag. Um, but I think while at the start of our play session, she was kind of there just doing me a favor and sort of paying attention in order to get the rules so that we could uh, sort of get on with the game and, you know, I suspect get it done. But by the end, um, she was sitting up and paying attention and really looking into the tactical uh, options available to her as she played as the Thunder Valley Greenskins because you know they've the different characters have different traits and skills and she wanted to know what they did and how she could use those to her advantage and basically she turned out to be a pretty tough opponent um, it's safe to say I mean it was her it was against her that I got that lucky breakaway and scored the touchdown but up until that point the entire first quarter I had been just eating it I'd just been having my ass handed to me um and that felt really rewarding that a somebody who not only doesn't have experience in in miniatures gaming but also doesn't really have the inclination to play could not only pick it up but sort of gain you know enough of an interest to want to carry on uh, that seemed heartening so all in all like i think i think experienced players will know that you know there is just a, a madcap appeal to blood bowl but 
uh, seeing it in action was really like an, another thing. And it was just refreshing to, to show somebody, but also to prove to myself that that miniatures games don't always have to be sort of massive long affairs. You know, like I, I really enjoy, say, fielding 2,000 points of, of Skaven, but at the same time, when I do that, I can hardly blame my opponent when, you know, in my first movement turn, I'm moving over a hundred bits of plastic around the table. They might tune out for a bit or take a nap or go to the cinema. Again, I think a lot of that beginner friendly nature is probably down to the fact that uh, this is in effect just a recreation of a sport and therefore it is, it's, it's a lot easier to wrap your head around the core concept than you know, some of the miniatures games where it's like, okay, I need to hold these points, but then these points will be worth more points in later battle rounds. But first I need to ensure that I'm dispelling blah, blah, blah. You know, it's the scope of the game is narrower, which means that you spend less time sort of learning how each faction plays. They don't play as drastically differently. Um, but it just, it just means that you can get on with it a bit quicker. And I think that really plays to its strength. Um, so... Yeah, I genuinely, I mean, I kind of teased it at the top of this review. I kind of feel like Blood Bowl is is my favourite Games Workshop game now. I still really enjoy the others, but it's just, in terms of packing in a lot of moments that you want to talk about, those little moments of excitement, into a short space of time, it just does that phenomenally well. I was texting people about incredible moments where I was playing against myself and I was about to basically score a touchdown, but I flubbed it and I got cocky and then I really capitalised on that and then I was really in trouble. I was, I wanted to talk about these moments as if they were high-octane sporting moments that I'd seen happen on a field. Instead, it was just me dotting around my kitchen going, uh, and trying to get my head around this new like product, basically, so I could review it for YouTube. And... I've, you know, I've been reviewing things online for a long time now, and I can't think of many other games that have done that, where I can get excited about basically just sort of doing a dummy version of it against me. I think it's it's captured my imagination in a way that, uh, you know, I find really compelling. Obviously, you know, you may be a, a well-heeled uh, Blood Bowl enthusiast being like, oh, he's saying all this now, but soon he's going to realise X, Y, and Z. And yeah, I, I am very much a novice. That's what I wanted to em emphasise at the top of this review. But uh, I tell you what, as much as I might be in the proverbial hype zone, it's a nice zone to be in. So yeah, obviously, I'm very excited to have uh, found what, I you know, shows all signs right now of being the Games Workshop and indeed the tabletop miniatures uh, game for me um your own mileage may vary depending on how much you uh you like what is basically let's let's face it uh, just a violent football simulator um and you know whether you 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 have a different style whether you want something where you know you can predict the outcome of a passage of play half an hour before it's complete or whatever that sounds like i'm negging other games i'm, I'm really not trying to uh, what i'm trying to say is that i i really like uh, Blood Bowl, hopefully you will too, uh, or you already know whether you do or not, in which case, you know, bonus, you don't need to take my opinion into consideration. Either way, uh, with the second season edition, I think this is a game that's in rude health, and if you are looking to get into it, it's pretty great value. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this review. Um, it's safe to say I did not get very far in painting this miniature whatsoever, but... Um, you know, hey-ho, I will finish them up and then I'll probably post them online or I'll be painting them in one of our painting streams, which are every other Thursday. So keep your eyes uh, peeled for that. Uh, like I say, hopefully you enjoyed this review. If you did, there are loads more videos from Dice Breaker for you to watch. Some of them should be popping up on screen now. So uh, do give those a click. Do like, subscribe, and ring the bell icon so you don't miss anything else from us. You can go to dicebreaker.com for written articles, dicebreaker.myshopify.com for merch. But most importantly... I would like you uh, to have a lovely day and accept my thanks for watching. Goodbye.